Hi everyone, it's Danny. Okay, excuse my voice, I seem to have caught a little cold. But anyway, today we're going to discuss about the right time to repot an orchid and if orchids can sulk if they are repotted at the wrong time. Um, I'll give you my opinion first, fairy tales. Then I'll explain what I mean. Alrighty, I'll show you some examples, uh, tell you a little bit about their history and the conclusions that I reached, and at the end I'll tell you my personal opinion on this and so on. Alrighty, let's start with the first example. Okay, first example. This is the Epidendrum Stamfordianum Galaxy. I purchased this in October last year. And at the time, many of my viewers did tell me that this orchid is known to really sulk if repotted at the wrong time. This is because they read it on some forums or articles, even on the AOS. So I was like, okay, fine, fine, maybe I'm doing something wrong. I will not repot this guy. I will exercise patience. You might remember the video. So what this guy did was actually to grow roots. I didn't repot him. It started to grow roots, and I think this cane right here was a new cane. It was in the period of actually growing roots, and since October to January or February, I did not repot him, but I had such a hard time keeping him watered. Believe it or not, it actually drinks a lot of water, and it was potted in a coarse media in a pretty uh, small basket, pretty small pot actually. So I was having trouble keeping up with its watering needs, and this cane right here was getting to the point of becoming papery thin. So I didn't like that. And in January and February, or February, I don't remember exactly, I decided to repot him. Um, so yeah, I took a risk. What if he sulks? But he didn't sulk. He continued to grow roots. Let's see, we have a root tip here, a big root right here, and so on. And also, he is producing a new shoot right here. So actually, after repotting and the added moisture, because now I can actually keep up with his watering needs, I also added some sphagnum moss to the mix. Um, he's taking off. So, Stanfordianum Galaxy, no sulking whatsoever. My conclusion, well, this guy doesn't really grow in wintertime because it might not be his season. So whether I repotted him in October, whether I repotted him in January or February like I did, it wouldn't have mattered. It does not grow in the wintertime like most orchids. It's gloomy, the day is short, and so on. So this guy most probably would have handled the repotting very well because he was actually growing roots. Um, it didn't matter that I waited a bit until January or February, and also I repotted him in wintertime, which you're not supposed to do, but there's no drama actually. So he's taking off, he's loving the moisture, um, he's actually loving the repot, so there we go, no drama on this one. Next up, the Cycopsis, which is in bloom at the moment. He's always in bloom. So if you remember, I got it last year in the spring, and when I got it, I repotted it, and somebody mentioned, oh, he's gonna sulk if you repot him, and it's not the right time, and so on. So I repotted him. He actually took repotting so well. I actually repotted him in a pretty tiny pot, and I reached to the point where I could not keep up with his watering preferences. The roots started to grow out of the pot. It was mess. So again, this winter I repotted the dude into a larger pot. Behold the root growth. I actually trimmed off a lot of roots out of this guy because they were just very, very old. Uh, still functional, but you know, just too old and I didn't want them to die. So at the time that I repotted this guy, this growth was mature and I think it is producing something right there, but I'm not sure. So the growth was mature, this one was growing, he had a flower and so on. So I repotted him and he's taking repotting very, very well. Twice. <laughs> so my conclusion, there is no good timing for a psychopsis because he is always in bloom or appears to be always in bloom. He's a sequential bloomer, so you cannot say when the flower has faded, repot him, or when the growth has just started growing, or so on. I repotted this guy really chaotically, and he handled it, and actually loved the extra moisture. This guy, again, likes to have quite a lot of moisture inside the pot. If he doesn't, the bulbs will shrivel and yeah, he's not gonna look pretty. So again, with Cycopsis, there is no good timing to repot him. If he has multiple growth patterns, how do you know which growth needs to start and which needs to finish and so on? Again, the flower will probably be there almost at all times, so you cannot know, okay, when the flower is done, I should repot him because he is a sequential bloomer. So with Cycopsis, as long as you absolutely do not massacre the root system, he has no reason to sulk. Mine did not sulk after two repottings in one year. So yeah, myth busted, I guess, with Cycopsis.
Okay, the Angrecum Sesqui Pedali. Uh, this is the king of repottings, actually. I repotted this guy three times in one year, but I had to. Okay, so I repotted him when I got him. Again, uh, people told me that they have read on forums that uh, Angrecums hate repottings and they can sulk for years if you repot them at the wrong time. I repotted him when? March or something like that when I got him. And everything looked fine, he started to grow roots and then at some point I bumped into it two months later because he is top heavy and I had to disturb the roots and repot him yet again and actually place it in a decorative pot. Now last summer I was gone and actually my neighbor came to water them. Somehow I found this guy, if you remember you might remember the video, he was on one side, he got out of the pot once again so I was forced at the end of August or beginning of September to repot him once again and I decided to actually change the media as well because they were sitting in a pool of water for two months while I was gone to be hydrated. So yeah, three times repotting. He cannot be bothered. He is growing roots like crazy. He's liking the media. He's liking my conditions. Also, he's growing leaves and so on. And he's not a baby. He's a mature orchid because some people were saying that babies handle repottings better. So no, no drama with the Angrecum. Poor guy was repotted three times. I did not mean to repot him three times. It just happened. He is top heavy. I decided to keep him hanging because he is top heavy. So my conclusion is as long as you don't actually damage the root system severely, he cannot be really bothered with repotting. If you do a good repotting then um, I don't know everything should be fine. This particular individual is not stressed by repotting as long again as you don't massacre the root system. But just like any other orchid uh, if he has a good root system he will take off. Okay sidereas. Uh, I have three sidereas one of which died unfortunately but I have three categories of sidereas. First one uh, is the one that sold for a year and a half for some reason and then at some point it started to grow. Then I have this one which did not sulk at all and the other one that I had did not sulk at all either um, even though I repotted it. So my conclusion with these guys is it just depends on the individual. Sometimes you can have individuals that uh, will adapt slower than others even if they are the same exact species. It really really depends on the individual. So if he went through a lot of things let's say at the nursery uh, bad transport, maybe disease, maybe lack of roots and so on. It might actually take a while for it to adjust to your environment and that might appear to you as sulking after repotting. This guy was repotted a month ago or something or two weeks ago or three uh, but he's not sulking, he's growing, he's good so repotting does nothing to him. He sulked because that's what he did, that's the particular individual. That one didn't soak, the other one didn't soak either. So it's only this particular individual from the same variety and species as the other ones. And lastly, this is a Cattleya that I absolutely adore and you might know it. I will show you a picture here. It's one of my favorite Cattleya. Smells wonderful. So I got it in autumn 2013. I repotted it. It absolutely did nothing until spring when it started to grow something. So I said, okay, it's a bifoliate Cattleya and you know they say that bifoliate Cattleyas sulk. So already. She's soaking after repotting. Alrighty, she bloomed last summer, did her thing, and actually all winter long she didn't do anything until now when she's putting out a new growth. Of course she grew roots and so on. So my conclusion is this is just how this Calia is. Whether I repot it or not, it will still grow one single suitable per year. It will still bloom one single time per year and that's it. And it's not necessarily because it is a bifoliate Calia. So this is the Jungle Ice Cattleya. It is a bifoliate Cattleya, but she grows so fast. It takes two months for a cane to completely mature. It takes about a month or a month and a half to start growing a new cane and so on. So I got it at the end of October and let's say this direction of growth, it produced this cane and this cane fully mature in a few months. So she really has a, a very, very fast growth pattern. So as you can see, some bifoli cattleyas grow really slow, while others grow really fast. And that's the genetic trait. There is, however, a small exception to this for some particular orchids, like the catacetum, which have a particular pattern of growth, and also I think the drobium nobilis. Now, in the growth period when this orchid actually grows actively, if you repot it right now, it might not bloom for you or it might have trouble uh, adjusting again and so on simply because this girl takes a winter rest 
and in the winter rest it is the best time to repot it because you're not going to damage the root system like i said previously if you damage the root system way too much or you mess a bit with it the orchid will slow down a bit just to take its time to adjust i'm not sure if you can actually kill them i don't think you can kill them but yeah i think you can risk a non-blooming orchid for that particular year simply because they do have a very very specific growth pattern both nobilis and these girls and also the orchids that do take that winter rest and that do not grow continuously like oncidiums or cattleyas and so on with this yes there is a bit of truth to it i don't think you can actually sulk the orchid i just think you will practically just risk not blooming or set it back just a little bit or make its growth a little bit slower but that's about it so for these guys yes i would recommend you repot them during their dormancy period if however you have a pot full of snails and so on just repot them do it because those snails will eat the plant so this is where you have to exercise common sense with an orchid just like any other orchid but these guys in particular so in my opinion and based on what i have the whole sulking thing is actually attributed to totally different things than um, species sick orchids can indeed take longer to adjust to your environment and to grow new roots and so on it's pretty logical they don't have enough strength to properly grow fast and that might look like sulking also, particular individuals from the same species might be different than others. It has to do a lot with genetics, especially if you're talking about hybrids. It has to do with the past of an orchid and so on. So I cannot say that sidereas in general will sulk for two years. I can only say that maybe some sidereas, just like maybe any other type of orchid, might take a longer time to adjust to an environment than others. Also take into consideration the growth pattern of an orchid. If it is genetically programmed to only grow one cane per year and bloom once per year, it might look like it is sulking for a few months when it, in fact it's actually taking its natural course. Also, when you repot an orchid and you manage to not damage the root system, the orchid has more chances to actually recover from the repotting better. If you massacre the root system, it will spend energy into figuring out what's going on and what she should do next. Roots, new shoots, what she should do next. It's pretty logical and I think that again can cause, let's say, this sulking thing that people talk about. And also, in the end, keep in mind that if you have good experiences with orchids, like say for example, I got an orchid, I repotted it and it started to grow, you wouldn't write that on a forum. But if you have a bad experience, like I repotted it, it didn't do anything for six months, what did I do wrong? You will actually post that on a forum. And let's say 20% of you guys will have a bad experience with a particular variety or species. You will write that on a forum. If you don't have a bad experience, you'll probably not write it on the forum. So the 20% of people who had bad experiences with certain individuals wrote that on forums and everybody could see and they draw the conclusion that it's something specific to particular species or varieties when in fact it's not so i guess that's how rumors start right so in my opinion the whole sulking thing it's it's pretty much fairy tale in the sense that it just depends on individual orchids and i have a lot of examples of orchids who sulked for various reasons and orchids who didn't sulk and they were from the same species so i don't think you can actually generalize it just like that and that's why i don't agree with it and that's why i actually do repot anytime i feel like it and or when i actually consider it is necessary not when i feel like it when it's actually necessary no matter the season no matter the state of the orchid and so on so okay this was the video on sulking orchids i hope you enjoyed it and yeah that's my opinion on things that's why i repot orchids when i do believe it's time to repot not necessarily when articles tell me to repot and i really didn't have many many trouble and the sulking orchids that i had i understood them and i don't think it was because i repotted them i believe there were other factors involved here which let's say are not so obvious unless you really think about it alrighty so thank you guys for watching hope you found this interesting if you want to see more videos from me don't forget to subscribe you can leave me questions or suggestions in the comment section below and you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Don't forget we have an Orchid giveaway. I will share the link towards it in the description below so if you are from Europe, Canada or USA you can enter and you can win yourself some Orchids or Orchid supplies. I'll see you next time. Bye!